In some of my recent videos, I was creating a variometer and I promised that as I learned more about it, I would pass that along. Part of that is as I've been doing my radio archeology, span because this technology is what, 100, 120 years old, I have found that there's something also called a, well, there's variometer and then there's the vario coupler. And I wondered how these were different. So I started doing research. I can find a lot more on the variometer than I can the vario coupler, but let me pass along what I have found. Okay, first of all, let's do a summary of the variometer. It is basically three coils in series. It is one long coil, like down here. It's the outer part of the ball coil and the inner coil and then the bottom uh, ball coil of the outer part of it. And when you go for maximum inductance, it is basically three coils in series, giving you the maximum inductance. And as you rotate it, it becomes less and less three coils in series until finally it pretty much cancels out and you get near zero, uh, near zero inductance. Let's see. So uh, yeah, the middle part of the coil can be ro uh, rotated in and out of phase to give you that. And the main property is the inductance changes. The symbol for it is down here. And this is a ball variometer and it's very similar to the uh, one I have created. Now a vario coupler. The devices look superficially the same, but they have very different functions. Um, they can be built basically almost the same way, but with a little bit of wiring difference. So the vario coupler, there's two separate coils. These are connected separately. You can see the red connection points I put on here. So this is like a transformer and you have a primary winding and a secondary winding and the variometer, you have one long winding, but this you have two windings and you have two separate sets of connections. It is pretty much uh, two different circuits. It is two different circuits. It's like any, uh, any transformer. And when the, when the uh, windings are oriented like this, you get maximum coupling between the two, just like in a transformer. And when it's the orientation is like this, you get less uh, coupling between the two circuits. Okay, what else? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the degree of rotation changes the degree of interaction. The, this is the symbol down here. And as you can see, this is uh, a little different. It's got a lot of taps in it. That's because of the way it's used. And you'll also notice that the ball kind of dips into this. It's not uh, just like rotating at a 90 degree angle to this. It's kind of dipping in and out and it's also changing the orientation. So uh, to summarize the differences, you have two coils like this versus one long coil and the coils are connected versus not connected. It is a variable transformer versus a variable inductor. And the outer coil is oftentimes a cylinder with many taps in it, as we saw in the earlier picture. Um, yeah, and so there's the difference in the two symbols. And lastly, I put together a table of the differences and most of these we've already talked about, but here's the vario coupler and the vario variometer. So outer top coil is wired to the bottom, inner coil is separate, so yes, this coil and this coil inside, they're completely separate circuits. This one, they're wired as one long inductor. Uh, so you have variable coupling of two circuits and here we have variable inductance within one circuit. The most common application is antenna tuning and this one is radio stations frequency tuning. The preferred characteristics are minimum maximum mutual inductance. And this is the preferred characteristics are low resistance, big inductance, small dielectric loss. And it's often wound with Litz wire. And I, I don't wind mine with Litz wire mostly because uh, finding it's hard. Uh, I've been given a source. I've been told that inside the induction stoves, you can find like lots and lots of Litz wire. So anyway, I had to check that out. Implementation, uh, the outer coil is often a cylinder like this one with many taps and the ball coil turns into it like that. And this is a, a ball within a ball, but oftentimes they use a cylinder. 
a ball within a cylinder or a cylinder within a cylinder just because it's easier to make. And I wasn't sure what to call this, so I call it electrophysics. Uh, so you can use both coil distance and orientation to achieve the minimum and maximum coupling. And on this one, you primarily use the coil orientation to achieve the minimum and maximum inductance. Uh, this is a variometer that I've shown in a couple videos. The question is, could you use this same design to create a variable coupler? And the answer is yes. So let's do a quick review of what's going on here. Normally the signal comes in here, goes to the top of the outer coil right here, runs down to the bottom of the outer coil, and that pops out here. It comes over to this screw. From here, we go to the coupler here, commutator, and that carries the electricity into the top of the ball here. The electricity passes down through the center ball and comes out here where it attaches to this wire, which is the top of the bottom coil passes down here to the bottom and then on this side we can see the bottom connection comes back up here now that's how you wire it for a variometer now if you wanted to do a vario coupler well it's actually even easier uh, what you want to do is you want to disconnect the two yellow wires so the this would be the input for let's let's call the inner ball your secondary uh, this would be the one side of your secondary and this would be the other side of your secondary and then as far as the uh, outer shell goes you want to connect just connect these two wires so you can move this connection over to here and make that one solid connection all the way down and so this would be one end of your uh, primary and the other end of your primary and so yeah you can use this same form uh, it won't be quite as efficient as say a, a purpose-built but yeah I mean it if you uh, want to get started and wanted to give it a try I would say that yeah this is a perfectly good beginning for making a vario coupler so other than this style of variometer that can also be wired into a vario coupler you can just jump straight to a vario coupler and there are many different styles a lot of this was done before you know there were electrical engineering uh, radio engineering was a uh, was a uh, given profession a lot of it was just kind of winged um, but you can wind your coils on the side of your pipe now this would normally be a piece of pvc but that cast shadows it makes hard to video you would wind your uh, coil here and put your taps in it and there's the style where they just put the shaft across the top pretty much uh, it's just set below the top and the ball is in there like this there's another style where they set the shaft at a 45 in the ball like this and then all of that is mounted roughly in a 45 like this inside of the inside of the pipe um, and of course you have your uh couplers on each end your uh, commutators on each end um, so yeah that's uh, one way to or actually several ways to uh, build your vario coupler okay well this kind of concludes the uh, what I've learned since the last video regarding uh, variometers and vario couplers I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY crystal radio efforts and uh, other electronic work